heart. We are told heart is uh, genetics. It comes from your mom and dad. And, you know, uh, every time I go to the doctor, they ask me a question, did your mom have a heart attack? No. How about your dad? My dad has 13 heart attacks. Really? Yes. How old was his first one? 44. How many has he had? 13. Has he had an open heart surgery? Yes. Does he have stents? Yes. Three of them. How many angiograms? He's had six angiograms, six angioplastics. You got to be careful because you may have it, right? So what they don't know is my dad smoked cigarettes two packs a day for 30 years, and he drank a full glass of alcohol every single day for 30 years is what he did. I don't smoke. I don't drink. So what is the cause of heart disease and why heart attacks take place? So, you know, we're going to have to go back. Just remember, just remember sixth grade, sixth grade, simplify it for us. All right. I'm trying, I'm trying my best, Patrick. Um, First of all, uh, here's, you know, we have to base every answer I give. I want it to be based on fact, right? Observations and fact. So fact number one, uh, in 1920 in this country, there was almost no heart disease. Everybody acknowledges that. In fact, there's an interesting story that a guy invented the EKG at Harvard Medical School, offered it to the Harvard faculty, and they said, there's no use for this, there's no heart disease in this country. And whenever traditional indigenous people are studied, they have no evidence of heart disease. They have no evidence of dying of heart attacks. Now, I don't know about your concept of genetics, but we're talking two or three generations ago, we went from almost nobody having heart attacks. And by the way, if you look at a cookbook from 1920 and you say, what were the healthiest foods that people should eat? It was very clear, butter, lard, and eggs and cream. Nobody had heart attacks. The fact that now in 1940, just one generation later, it became the number one killer of Americans. There is no possible way that has anything to do with genetics. See, now I got smarter, Tom. I'm telling you, what a difference it made in the first 45 minutes. And now I'm telling you, that was ridiculous. So 1920, no heart disease, just two or three generations ago. In a 1920 cookbook, they're talking about butter, lard, and eggs. In 1940, a generation later, they're calling that the number one killer. So who wrote the 1940 cookbooks and who made us think that these things kill us with heart attacks? And then when do we start having heart attacks? We started having heart attacks with the two major things happened. One, the major change in the American diet again, away from uh, healthy fats and towards margarine, Crisco, and other processed foods. Uh, three things. Two, the second thing was the widespread use of chemicals in agriculture and food and DDT and all the rest of it. And three was the increasing electrification of the earth, which we now know interferes with your ability to generate uh, oxygen and to use oxygen. So as soon as those thing, three things happen, you see this, epidemi- this epidemic of heart disease. Now, here, here's another thing, Patrick. You know, if, if you ask 100 doctors, 100 lay people, 100 people off the street, Why do people have heart attacks, right? They say the exact same thing. You have these three major coronary arteries. They carry all the blood to your heart. One of them gets blocked with plaque or two of them or three of them. The blood can't get through and then you have a heart attack and die, right? Sure. Everybody knows that. Yep. You with me? I'm with you. This part, I'm with you sixth grade, fully qualified. Got it. Okay. Now let's dissect this out a little bit. Uh, I've seen probably 100 people come to my office, say 50-year-old man. Uh, Let me stop for a minute here. Let me go back a little bit. So would you agree that if there's something blocking your arteries, it's probably in your blood? Sure. Right? Second question. Do you think the blood in in your coronary arteries, the heart arteries, is the same blood as you have in your spleen and liver and foot and everywhere else. I would assume so. Yes, I would too. Okay. So the the blood leading to your spleen has whatever it is that's causing the plaque, just like in the coronary arteries. So you must get plaque in your splenic artery as well, right? Sure, yes. 
Now, how many people have you heard of who've had spleen attacks? <laughs> I've never heard of spleen attacks. So I, I have given lectures to maybe 50 to 100,000 people in my career. One of the questions, if I'm talking about heart, please raise your hand if you've heard of anybody or know of anybody who had a spleen attack, a liver attack, a foot attack, or a kidney attack. You know how many people raised their hands? None. None. Now, next question. How many of you know somebody personally or in the news who had a heart attack? Plenty. 100%. Sure. How come? Same arteries, same Advertise. blood, same yeah. plaque. How come? Next question. Guy comes to me. I've seen this probably 50 times, maybe 100 times, because I wrote a book about the heart. I have a medicine sure. yeah. for the heart. People come to me. 50-year-old guy. Doc, I walked up a hill. I felt a little pressure in my chest. I went to the doctor. He said, oh, you might have heart disease. We got to check your arteries. Does an angiogram. Says, you have a 95% blockage. Usually they go like this. And if you block any more, you're going to die of a heart attack, right? I've heard that a hundred times. Let's think about this for a minute. We're told that all the blood to your heart goes through those three arteries, right? Sure. That's why they unblock them. You, not you, but the guy who came to me, the you have 5% blood flow through your artery. Okay. How did you walk up that hill? Next question. You mean if you, not you, but that guy, you block from 5% to 3%, that's going to kill you. I don't believe it. 5% is no blood flow. 3%, 5%, exactly the same. There is no evidence that that makes any difference at all. Next thing, there was the biggest study ever done on people who died of heart attacks. They did it with autopsies. A guy named Giorgio Baroldi. What if year was see, it? What? What year was it? 2000 something. So this is recent. It's not recent. a 20s or 40. It's a recent one. No, no, this is okay. 2010, 13, okay. 12. Got it. I don't know. If you want to read the entire book, if you're a, a glutton for scientific punishment, go to heartattacknew.com. At the bottom, there's a print version. Baroldi uh, prints the whole version, does autopsies 50 years on people who die of heart attacks. He says 41% of them have a blocked artery. And of that blockage, 50% come after the heart attack, not before. So if you do the math, that means that 80% of the heart attacks have, are, uh, have no evidence of any blockage in the, in the artery leading to that part of the heart, none. Now, the, when I wrote the book, I pointed that out and said, what is the reason why these other 80% die? And in fact, if you look at the studies of stents and bypasses, right? So these are mechanisms or strategies to clear out the arteries. If it was just a blockage, it should work. Every single one of them, the conclusion is there's no evidence that having a stent makes you live longer or not have a second heart attack. And then in October 2018, in the Lancet, for the first time, they did a blinded study of stents, right? So they took, I don't know how many, I think 70 people who had a, a single vessel blockage, right? Half of them, they put a stent in. The other half, they put a catheter in. They told them they put a stent in, but didn't. And they assessed them eight weeks later. They had the exact same amount of chest pain. So not in the headlines of the article was stents proven useless. Now, it's therefore proven that stents don't prevent further heart attacks. They don't make you live longer and they don't help you have less chest pain. And so it's very difficult to say, so what is the benefit? And I can't think of any. And in the article, they said, there must be something else that is causing people to have heart attacks. And essentially then the European Heart Association redid their typology of heart disease and said 60 to 
of people who have heart disease, signs and symptoms, have no evidence of any plaque buildup. So essentially the whole plaque thing, at most it has to do with 20%. And the fact of the matter is most of the blood flow to our heart doesn't come from this, these arteries anyways. But it, it is basically a watershed with millions of little capillaries, just like a, a watershed instead of a river. And when you have disease in how you generate energy, then you have a heart attack. 